Pima vents are in a lot of attention there because it's such an important niche treating psychosis in Parkinson's disease. Is Pima Vanserin actually better than what you have been using, which are, according to a 2017 review and 2019 Canadian guidelines, metiopine and clozapine, right? Hi, Jim Phelps here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. Did you know that psychosis in Parkinson's is basically iatrogenic? Really? Right. Before levodopa, depression and other psychiatric disorders were described in Parkinson's, but psychosis was rare. So it makes sense that even now, in untreated Parkinson's, psychosis is also rare. The patients who are taking pro-dopaminergic medications, the incidence of psychosis is around 30%, and in some studies up to 50%. Is pimavanserin the solution? Well, that depends on where you look and how you look at it. What we need is a meta-analysis. Here's one by Mansuri and colleagues. They found two published and three unpublished trials. All were company-sponsored. Only the positive ones were published. But in meta-analysis of all five, hemovanserin did outperform placebo. But is it better than quetiapine or clozapine? Ah, uh, pity there are no head-to-head -head studies. So we need a network meta-analysis. And here is one by Yunusa and colleagues. But before we look at the comparison outcomes, a key question is, is it Parkinson's psychosis or delirium? The usual differentiating factor is apply. Acute versus insidious, impaired consciousness versus clear sensorium, but visual hallucinations are seen in both. As for thought process, it's disorganization and inattention and delirium versus delusions in Parkinson's psychosis, often complex delusions, and over time, a loss of insight into those delusions. So once you've established that, uh-oh, it's Parkinson's psychosis, all right, what are the treatment options? It's not straight to Pima Vanserin. A 2000 review breaks down six steps. You won't be surprised by the first three, which are basic dementia treatment ingredients. First, General measures like reestablishing circadian rhythm and ensuring hearing and vision. Second, look for triggers infection, dehydration, cardiac insufficiency, oxygenation problems. And third, elimination of non essential medications, particularly anticholinergic, anticholinergic, and sedating drugs. Fourth, also obvious but trickier, reduction of anti Parkinsonian medications. The 2017 review suggests the following order, anticholinergic agents, selegiline, amantadine, dopamine agonists, COMT inhibitors, that's anticapone and opicapone, and only lastly, L-DOPA. Step five, if there's cognitive impairment as well as psychosis, you might consider a cholinesterase inhibitor. And then finally, step six, antipsychotics. And so now to the network meta-analysis regarding which one is best, retiapine, clozapine, or pimavanserin. The author's conclusions from that network meta-analysis, they all work, and none clearly more than another. Clozapine clearly had more side effect dropouts, retiapine more cognitive impairment, and that's it. Wast is not mentioned there, so I looked quickly. Pimavanserin is about $4,500 a month, although there are discount programs. In summary, any of those three medications is just as worth considering as the rest, and there are obvious differences between them, including cost. Don't forget all the other preceding steps, and for more on that, the 2017 review has more detail on each of those steps.